starts right now. Making headlines overnight, three people sent to the hospital after a cutting at a north side apartment complex. We have the latest from police. A potentially promising sign in the fight for a coronavirus vaccine. Also, President Trump announcing that he's been taking hydroxychloroquine to protect himself from COVID. I'm Alex Perche in Washington. I'll have details coming up. And looking outside with live cam, warm start to your Tuesday morning. Boy, it was hot yesterday. We'll check in with Mike and get your forecast. Yeah, where do you see today's high temperatures? Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday. It is May 19th. Thanks for being with us this morning. I went for a jog in the morning and it wasn't too bad. But when the sun came out and it started heating up, it started heating up. And what and, about today, Mike? Oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> just wait. But at least if you were in the shade yesterday, it was a little bit more comfortable because we right. had lower humidity. So today uh, we're going to be close to a record. Oh, wow. Yeah, way up there. 94 yesterday, and we're going to make it up to 98 for a high temperature later on today. This morning, it's yeah, it's warm. We are definitely above normal, but kind of pleasant. I mean, the humidity is okay this morning. 73 in town, 72 Bulverde. I think we'll drop down a couple of more degrees just because the air is, again, relatively dry. We've got those clear skies out there and very light wind. Molds on the high side from yesterday. Grass is low. And, yeah, temperatures will be up to 90 at noon, 98 for a high temperature. The record is 101. We'll see a lot of triple-digit readings especially off to the west around the uh, Rio Grande Valley. Winds out of the southeast at uh, 5 to 10 miles per hour. So this is going to be the peak of the temperatures this week. We will see readings start to <clears throat> excuse me, go down a little bit and make a steady decline downward throughout the rest of the week. And we'll actually be down in the 80s by the weekend. We're also going to see some rain chances coming in here by the weekend. We'll talk about that in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now this Tuesday morning. A very good morning to Officer Marcus Trujillo. What's cooking, sir? Well, good morning, Mike. Good morning, everyone at home as we take a look at the map. So far, we're off to a good start. <laughs> Not seeing any accidents out there at this point on the highway. So. Let's get straight to I-10 at Medical. We see no issues there. 2 to 1 at Hildebrand, north and south on lanes move along nicely through that curve there. And then Highway 151 at 410 so far, traveling all four directions at that intersection, moving along nicely. No problems over here, 35 at 1604. A little bit of construction, so that should be wrapped up here shortly, but uh, things are moving along with no delays. Mark? New this morning, three people stabbed after a family violence disturbance on the city's northeast side last night. Sarah Costa joined us live from home. Sarah, was anyone seriously hurt? Good morning, Mark. No one was taken to the hospital in serious condition. However, one woman was transported with a stab wound. She was in stable condition. Police say they got the call just before 1030 last night on the city's northeast side to an apartment complex. A cutting happened at a complex called Salado Creek Apartments in the 3400 block of Salado Creek. Police say when they arrived, they found three people with stab wounds after someone in their family got upset took out a knife and cut three of their family members. SAPD and SAFD treated two of those victims on scene. The third was taken to University Hospital. Like we said, she was in stable condition. Now the police are continuing to search for the suspect. Police say that the person who stabbed those family members drove off in a tan vehicle. Reporting live from home, I'm Sarah Costa, Case at 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sarah Bear County Sheriff's deputies have arrested a 23 year old man. They say shot two people at a car wash on the northeast side earlier this month. Taryn Bowie is facing two counts of aggravated assault. Deputies say that the two victims went to meet him at a high tech car wash, which is on Lakeview Drive. They were trying to sell him an Xbox. But when he arrived, they say Bowie came around the corner of the building and just started shooting. The victims, both teenagers, were shot in the foot and back, but they are expected to survive. Here's a look at the uh, latest, uh, latest number of coronavirus cases for Bear County, which now stands at 2,213. Mayor Ron Nirenberg says we now have the capacity to administer up to 3,000 tests per day. It is worth noting that half of all positive cases in Bear County have now fully recovered. Meanwhile, there's some new hope when it comes to the search for a vaccine for the coronavirus. ABC's Alex Perche has more from Washington. President Trump making a surprise announcement. I'm taking it, hydroxychloroquine. When, when right that, now, yeah. yeah when, the president saying he's been taking the drug used to treat malaria as a protective treatment for coronavirus. A couple of weeks ago, I started taking it. 
because I think it's good. I've heard a lot of good stories. For some two months, the president has been promoting hydroxychloroquine as a treatment for the virus. The president saying he asked the White House doctor if he could take it, even though he says he does not have the virus or any symptoms. But just last month, the FDA warned against using it for COVID-19 outside of hospitals or clinical trials because it could cause heart problems. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi voicing concern on CNN. He's our president and I would rather he not be taking something that has not been approved uh, by the scientist, especially in his age group and in his, shall we say, weight group, what is morbidly obese, they say. So I, I, uh, I, I think it was, it's not a good idea. Meanwhile, a potential breakthrough on the vaccine front. Moderna Labs, an American company working on a vaccine, says all 45 of their test patients are producing antibodies that fight the disease. To um, have one small role in, in just getting beyond this pandemic is, is uh, an amazing opportunity. Norman Hume of Atlanta is one of them. He received his second dose of the vaccine Monday. In the early results, the 45 patients developed the same level of antibodies as someone who's recovered from COVID-19. The vaccine will have to pass more phases of testing, and if the results continue to prove positive, Moderna hopes the drug can be ready by the end of the year. And now even more states are reopening. More than 130,000 auto workers were back on the job Monday, the first time in eight weeks. By Wednesday, Connecticut will begin to reopen, meaning that all 50 states will have eased restrictions. Cases still rising in at least 10 of them. At least another two dozen have hit a plateau. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. 436, 73 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, there's another danger on roadways during the pandemic. Law enforcement officials around the country say there's a surge in reckless driving and street racing on empty roads. Outside with live cam, the heat is on. It's going to feel more like July out there today. We'll get an update from Mike Ostrade coming up right here on Good Morning San Antonio. In your other morning headlines, President Trump threatening to permanently pull funding from the World Health Organization. In a letter to the Director General, the President says the organization's mishandling of the pandemic has been costly for the world. Last month, President Trump temporarily halted funding to the organization. At the same time, at the time, rather, he said the U.S. gives $400 million to the WHO each year, while China contributes $40 million. The president says that if the organization had done its job, COVID-19 would have been contained in China. A large brush fire has scorched about 350 acres in Utah. It broke out in a small town in the southwest portion of the state, closer to Las Vegas. People living in at least 20 homes had to be evacuated as strong winds stirred up the flames. So far, fire crews have had no luck containing it. Firefighters are also working to contain a second fire in a nearby county. The authorities are still investigating how those fires started. The attorney for Ahmaud Arbery's family believes a third suspect needs to be arrested in the deadly shooting case in Georgia. That suspect, William Roddy Bryan, the man who recorded the video of Arbery's death. Attorneys for Bryan say their client is innocent and of any crime and has even taken a polygraph submitted to authorities. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation won't comment on the polygraph results because the case is still under review. Bryan's attorney says his client is in hiding and in fear for his life. Just about 441, 73 degrees. Still ahead, more on a special upcoming benefit concert. It features the boss himself, Bruce Springsteen. And next, while a bat is mostly being blamed for the pandemic, more on how a local group is trying to protect Texas bats and their ecosystem. Welcome back, everybody. Your time now, 443. A new warning about danger on the roads during the pandemic. Police departments around the country are reporting a surge in reckless driving, street racing, and crashes on empty roads. ABC's Gio Benitez has details in your GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, it's the coronavirus side effect no one saw coming. As we head toward Memorial Day weekend, an urgent new warning with more and more dangerous scenes like these. Watch as cars speed through red lights, causing crash after crash. As we move toward a new normal, we need to get there safely. Don't speed. Don't drive distracted. GMA riding along with Connecticut State Police to see just how fast drivers are going. Within minutes, Trooper Kurt Booker is pulling someone over. Police, the reason why I stopped you, got your 93. Is there any justification for your speed today? 
Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you what police are doing across the country to crack down on this dangerous trend and how you can stay safe on the roads. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. 445 bats getting a bad rap these days due to the pandemic. But as you know, here in Texas, bats are considered a vital part of our agricultural economy. Patty Santos tells us about an ongoing effort to protect them from viruses and most recently the coronavirus. A bat is the only flighted mammal in the world. We need them desperately. Yeah, this is Robin. There's 36 species that live in Texas, mm -hmm. and we need every single one of them. Now that's rare. Michelle Camara, a wildlife conservationist, is going to bat for the bats in Texas. This is a bat that will eat 6,000 bugs in a night. She wants the community to know bats are not dangerous. These ones will live about eight years. In fact, they're pretty helpful to yeah, Texans. Just the Mexican free tail bats in Texas save farmers in the order of $1.2 billion a year and reduced pesticide needs. So important, Texas Parks and Wildlife recently hired a bat expert to continue to learn more about the mammals. I find that people are are pretty proud of the bats that we have here and seem to be pretty interested in them. State mammologist Jonah Evans says bats in our region are commonly known to potentially contract rabies like cats and dogs. He says there's no indication that North American bats carry any form of coronavirus. But there are studies gearing up to see if they can become infected and carry the disease. If they could carry the disease, one, it could make bats sick and it could kill bats potentially. The other is we don't want it to create another reservoir for the disease to potentially get into other animals, potentially get back to people. And they'll have different crevices on their face. Testing for coronavirus is not yet available for bats, but new guidelines have been set for those who have permits to handle them. Any wildlife rehabilitator, they can still receive injured and sick bats into their facility, but they are not allowed to release them into the wild until we have more information. Um, on how on the r potential risk here. San Antonio is less than an hour away from Bracken Bat Cave, one of the largest congregation of mammals in the world. It is estimated that anywhere between 5 and 20 million bats are in that cave. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. And there are so many coming out of that cave typically at night that they show up on radar. Friday night as the storms are coming in, I saw the uh, the radar signature uh -huh. bloom as they were headed out to, uh, for dinner. And it's almost like, OK, everybody home. Everybody go home. Everybody go home. <laughs> the is, storms are coming in. There's a storm in. coming in. That's they just, hilarious. They timed it right before the storms blew through here Friday evening. That is really funny. Yeah. And let's find out how the roadways are looking as we start to open up the state and people are going to work. We could get busier on the roadways. It will get busier eventually. Right now, things are still holding uh, pretty much about the same volume as last week. So uh, take a look, 21 in Acoma, no problems there. And we're moving over to 21 and Winding Way and all the way through north and southbound lanes of 21 still looking great. No problems there. I-10 there at 1604. So that's a welcome sight. And not uh, too far in the past, in about an hour, that roadway there would have been jam packed. I love that silver shot. It looks like it's silver. Mm hmm. You know? Kind of cool. Yes. I also love this pick. Is that what I think it is in the back? Is that one of the missions or is that the Taj? It looks like the Taj, I Kinda think, does, or there Randolph. It? Yeah, it does. Yeah, which is the big the the gold control dome. tower there. Control well, tower. actually, the, uh, yeah, it's, it's not, the water tower. It's not the control tower, yeah. Right. It's that they hit the water tower in that. There, I, I did so. not know that. And my dad was stationed there many moons ago. I, it is, I still think it's I one of the prettiest. I didn't know it was either. I, I still think it's one of the prettiest Air Force bases in the country. Yeah, it, it's a gorgeous way that they designed it. Beautiful picture, too. And by the way, if you're going to be out today, uh, it's going to be hot. And, uh, you, you know, like Leslie, you said yesterday, you went for a jog. But if you're in the direct sun, don't forget, add about 10, 15 degrees. The sun's actually heating you up. You're not just feeling the air temperature. So that's what uh, all these numbers are, just the, the air temperature. So definitely take it easy if you're going for a walk, you know, taking the dog for a walk, something like that. Watch because the pavement's going to get pretty toasty as well. So we've got clear skies uh, this morning, and we're going to have uh, just gorgeous, gorgeous sunrise this morning. Again, temperatures are about five above normal right now. We should be in the upper 60s, 73, 70 uh, Bernie stage Bandera, 69 down the road in Divine and the humidity, which had dropped down. We were about 60 yesterday for dew point temperatures. Now these dew points are back up, which is the cycle we're going through yesterday and today. 
Tomorrow's going to look like a different story. So we will see humidity drop off, two points drop down into the lower 60s later on today. Now we'll still have some humidity down here along the coastal plain, of course. Then it comes back up overnight, but throughout the day tomorrow, we're still going to keep some around throughout the afternoon. We're also going to have a couple of more clouds hanging around here uh, tomorrow morning. We'll have some and then maybe one or two left over during the day. And then the humidity is definitely going to be staying up. Now temperatures. Yeah, it's going to be sizzling out there. This computer model has a 99. I'm going for 98 here in town, but uh, we've got a lot of low hundreds off to the west and southwest along the Rio Grande Valley. So definitely triple digits here in town. The record is 101. Definitely going to be close, obviously, and then down to the low 70s tomorrow, back to the mid 90s tomorrow. We will still see some triple digit temperatures, but not quite as hot. So this is just going to be a one day thing where temperatures really spike and then we'll start to see a decline in temperatures going down, uh, going through the next couple of days. As far as cloud cover, nothing out there today. We'll have a few clouds hanging around then tomorrow morning. Uh, maybe a little mist as the humidity really comes up more sunshine in the afternoon. Then we get more clouds coming in here Thursday and there is going to be a chance for rain on Thursday. A couple of showers, uh, perhaps a stray thunderstorm, a little bit better chance of rain Friday and then especially Saturday and then going into Sunday. We'll have a better shot at uh, some scattered showers and thunderstorms and nothing is showing up on the satellite picture obviously as of right now. And the only thing nationally is on the bookends here. What we are looking at though going into the future and this is why rain chances may stick around going into the latter part of the weekend and the first part of next week is a low trying to develop right here sitting basically on top of us and that thing's going to set up camp and if that just sits there we could have a kind of a bit of a rainy period Sunday into the first part of next week. So today gonna be hot 90 Already above the normal high temperature at noon, sunny skies and then blisteringly hot 98. Again, the record is 101 out there at the airport tomorrow. 95 90 on Thursday. Uh, a few more clouds hanging around here, but a lot more humid, so well, may not be quite as comfortable once we get into Thursday with all that humidity. Uh, rain chances start to creep up and up and we'll have better chances of rain, especially later in the weekend. And it looks like Sunday and Monday, especially even though Yes, that is Memorial Day. Looks kind of wet for the uh, holiday. And I, I apologize. I mm -hmm. forgot to put the holiday on there for Memorial Day. Can we well, please get one more will, cold front? I will fix that. So, you mean like cold, cold front? Yeah. Please. Okay, we're getting late May. That's, no, so that's, is that a no? That's, that's kind of a no. Okay. Yeah, thank I you, like Mike. the odds of winning the lottery. You're getting into that right now. That's also <laughs> a, probably a no. 452, 73 degrees. Up next, more on a special charity concert that features a guest appearance by the one and only Bruce Springsteen. Well, here are some lottery numbers to look at, Mike. Pick three numbers, 635, Fireball 8, Daily 4, 4220, Fireball 6. And you cash five numbers, 2816, 2228, Texas 2 Step 5, 6, 12, 19, with a bonus ball of five. Well, this morning we're hearing from the latest American Idol champion, plus more on a special charity concert. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Just Sam. The finale night of American Idol is stressful Sam, enough with the finalists worrying about singing well, but this year there was a bunch of added pressure, new American Idol chant Just Sam tells us, because she was alone in self-isolation. Okay, you gotta do sound check, you gotta do your cameras, you gotta do your set, you gotta do your hair and makeup now. Um, and then on top of that, you know, I had to keep like running back and forth to the camera to see if my angles were right. Apparently her angles were right. Just Sam won the singing competition show Sunday night, and now she has a record deal. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. The actor behind one of TV's first bad boys has died. Ken Osmond played the devious Eddie Haskell on Leave it to Beaver. He left acting not long after the show ended in the early 60s, concerned he was being typecast and became an officer with the Los Angeles Police Department. In 1980, he was shot five times chasing down a suspect, saved by his bulletproof vest. Ken Osmond was 76. Who says you can't go to a stadium concert? The Dropkick Murphys are playing Fenway Park in Boston. And while you can't physically go, the stands will be empty. You can mosh virtually. The concert broadcast live online May 29th. We'll raise money for charity and feature a special remote appearance by Bruce Springsteen. Townsend has had to postpone rocking out in the stadium for now, but he might be rocking out at home today. It's his birthday. The Who, guitarist and songwriter, is 75, while celebrated singer Sam Smith is 28. Stay with me. 
And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. And here's what's happening on your Tuesday morning. It is 457, 73 degrees. Coming up in our next half hour, local leaders are reacting to Governor Greg Abbott's latest order to reopen more businesses across the state. Plus, coughing or sneezing onto your smartphone could soon be a way to get tested for COVID-19. More on that ahead what? in Tech Bites. Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this hour, a teen is shot during a drive-by on the east side. We'll have the latest information from SAPD. Plus, local leaders react to the governor's latest orders to reopen Texas. Near record heat on a May 19th. Yeah, it's uh, looking like it could happen. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday. It is May 19th. Get ready. He is talking about close to 100 degrees today, so it's going to definitely be a scorcher. And he would be Mike Osterhage. A lot of folks will be seeing 100 today down to the to the west and to the southwest in the Rio Grande Valley. We're looking at some low hundreds there. And in town, yeah, it's going to be close to a record high temperature. Right now we're starting off at 73, 67 over in Hondo. Normal low temperature at San Antonio is 68, although I think we will drop down maybe a couple more degrees in the next few hours. The dew point measure moisture in the atmosphere is 66 right now so it is up you kind of feel it a bit as a matter of fact take a look at some of the uh, dew point temperatures around the area of course 60s that uh, that threshold line you get below that and it is more comfortable 62 Rio Medina not bad but then you got 68 for a dew point temperature at Randolph so it's uh, fairly humid same thing up around Bernie but these numbers are going to be dropping down somewhat later on today molds on the high side that I would venture a guess would be dropping down a little bit uh, later on this morning morning as we kind of dry out from all the rain that we had uh, early last weekend. 90 today at noon, 98 for a high temperature and the record is 101. That's just out there at the airport. So this is again in the shade out in the direct sun. It's going to feel a whole heck of a lot hotter than that, even though the humidity is going to be dropping down somewhat. So obviously it's one of those days you want to really take it easy. Temperatures will make a decline toward the end of the week. And as that happens, rain chances will go up toward the end of the week and the weekend. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic. Here is Officer Marcus Trujillo. Anything going on yet? Well, Mike, as we take a look at the roadways, still looking great. We're off to a pretty good start this morning. A little bit of construction. Uh, I-10 Bernie Stage Road and also 60435. That's going to be uh, headed back towards I-10 along 604 from 35 up on the northeast side. Now take a look. 2D1 and Winding Way. No problem there. And then 35 at Flotus, north and south by lane still running smoothly at this point. 10 at West Avenue, or, or 10 at 1604 rather, you can see travel in both directions still running smoothly. Leslie? Thanks, Marcus. Here this morning, San Antonio police are looking for a suspect. They say shot a teenager in the ankle during a drive-by shooting early this morning. It happened in the 3500 block of Southton View. That's on the far east side. It was just before 2 o'clock this morning. SAPD says the male teen was grazed by some shotgun pellets during the shooting. They say he was not taken to the hospital. The suspect got away in a white vehicle. At last check, police were still trying to find the person responsible. Police are also trying to find out what led up to another shooting on the east side. Officers originally called to the 4800 block of Alfred Drive yesterday where they believe two groups were shooting at each other. But when they got there, all they found was a vehicle with its rear window shot out. They then received a call for help from the 500 block of Gembler nearby. And that is where they found a 24 year old man shot in the arm. They believe he drove himself from that first location. Police said the man is not cooperating. At last check, no arrests had been made. Mayor Ron Nirenberg reacting to Governor Greg Abbott's reopening announcement. Under phase two, child care centers, office buildings, personal care services like massages and beauty parlors, youth sports and gyms, all allowed to open immediately. On Friday, May 22nd, bars, bowling alleys, bingo halls, skating rinks, rodeos, zoos, aquariums, and natural bridge cabins permitted to open. Then on Sunday, May 31st, youth day camps, overnight youth camps, and some professional sports will also be allowed to resume. We know there's going to be more physical interaction, so there's uh, going to be uh, more potential spread of this virus. It just requires us to do two things, in my mind. One, uh, be mindful of the public health guidance. The second part uh, is to make sure that as we begin to open up that um, we're watching the data, that we're vigilant, and that we continue to see the data move in the right direction, which it is now. And if we see some things not going in the right direction, that we're willing to say, you know what, let's slow down a little bit and make sure we do it the right way. 
In addition, school districts will be allowed to begin summer school classes on June 1st. You can find all the details right now on KSAT.com. Nationwide, Texas is one of the states leading the way when it comes to reopening businesses. But some are now asking governors to clarify the rules amid growing confusion. ABC's Andrew Fuji has the latest. This morning, major steps to reopen more of America. In Texas, gyms and hair salons already operating just days after the state saw its highest one-day increase in coronavirus cases, hundreds of them tied to meatpacking plants. When we increase testing in hot spots, the number of people testing positive is going to spike. The governor also announcing youth sports can hold practices at the end of the month and summer camps can begin. In California, the governor relaxing some criteria, now allowing 53 out of 58 counties to move into phase two of reopening, thanks to a drop in hospitalizations. He says pro sports, hair salons and churches may be able to open in June. New York's governor also saying his state is ready for sports to restart without fans. Despite recent cases of the virus on the rise in 10 states, plans to reopen are still in place. Massachusetts becoming the 49th state to start to reopen, Connecticut to follow tomorrow. Spreading the virus is a big concern. Too many people without the mask. Patio only dining has opened in Ohio, but multiple restaurants receive citations after owners admit social distancing was hard to control. As more factories reopen, not everyone is happy about returning to work. More than 130,000 auto workers back on the job in Michigan for the first time in eight weeks. Should be here. It's not fair. Workers now getting screened with temperature checks, wearing masks, gloves, and protective eyewear. Life is risk. I think this is a minor one. I'm willing to take it to put food on the table. Andrea Fujii, ABC News, New York. 506, 73 degrees. Still ahead, how COVID-19 could soon be detected by sneezing or coughing into your smartphone. Plus, TGI Fridays has a brand new burger that might make your doctor a little mad at you <laughs> if, if you eat it. What about just a bite? I don't know. It looked like your fries and burger all on one. It's kind of what it looked like to me. Yes, it did. Yeah, it looks like not very healthy, but that's okay. We'll be back. Ten past the hour, not one, but two kittens rescued from a storm drain in the past two days. This happened in far north Bear County and involves some volunteer firefighters. Sarah Costa joins us live from home with that story. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, and they were two very cold and hungry kittens, and now they are both safe and have new homes. It sounds like a children's story, but it really did happen in Bear County, north, far north Bear County. On Sunday afternoon, the volunteer Bear County and Bulverde Fire Department was called out to a storm drain behind Kinder Ranch Elementary School in far north Bear County after someone walking the neighborhood heard meowing coming from inside the storm drain. The firefighters climbed down the drain and about 100 feet in, they found a very cold and hungry gray kitten. The kitten was adopted immediately by a resident in the neighborhood who works closely with an animal shelter. The kitten was only one pound and one month old. One month old. Then yesterday afternoon, firefighters were called out to the same storm drain after another kitten was heard meowing loudly from inside. This time, firefighters climbed 400 feet down the drain to find that second kitten. Firefighters say this second kitten had a set of lungs on it. It could be heard from far away. Now, that kitten was also taken by, was taken by a member of Kinder Ranch Elementary School. They are both uh, they were both seen by veterinarians and they're both deemed healthy and they are now warm and I'm sure have their bellies full and no longer have to live in a storm drain. <laughs> Reporting live from home, Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News, Mark and Leslie. And after that video, I can guarantee they're going to get forever homes. Yeah, they are. Oh, that's a, a double dose of awe. Thank you, Sarah Acosta. Thanks, Sarah. And your morning consumer headlines. Thermometers are getting hard to come by these days, and it could get even worse. Thermometer manufacturers and distributors say the devices were already in high demand from healthcare workers because of the pandemic. But now, companies who are requiring temperature checks are also buying the devices in mass bundles. The CEO of one of the nation's largest thermometer manufacturers says demand is up 900 percent for the company's non-contact thermometers. Multiple medical suppliers say more customers have put a strain on the thermometer supply chain because they simply can't make enough right now. 
TGI Friday is offering up an alternative to COVID-19 in the form of a possible massive coronary. The restaurant launching a new burger that incorporates one of its most popular appetizers. Check this out. It's called the Loaded Cheese Fry Burger and includes a burger topped with loaded bacon cheese fries. In case that's not enough for you, they put queso on top of all of that. And for an extra splash of grease, a single loaded potato skin is put on top of the sandwich with a skewer that tries to hold the whole thing together. Friday's website lists the burger at only 1,450 calories. Nope, not even a bite. Want to share it? Not even a bite. A quarter? Not even a bite. Okay, mm -mm. I'll, I'll eat it. 513, 73 degrees. Still ahead, more on why a group of celebrities and Oscar winners are getting together to read the classic children's book, James and the Giant Peach. The next Amazon and bankrupt JCPenney reportedly in talks over some type of deal. Will, but will it be enough to save pennies? That's coming up in Tech Bites. I know one thing, I love my house. It's just home and I love it. For over 25 years, Home Instead has helped seniors stay home. Now, staying home isn't just staying in the place they love. It's staying safe. It's essential. If your loved one needs in-home care, we're here to help. Home Instead. To us, it's personal. Yes, the first word to any adventure. But when allergies and congestion strike, take Allegra D, a non-drowsy antihistamine plus a powerful decongestant. So you can always say yes to putting your true colors on display. Say yes to Allegra D. Thank you for being a friend. Travel down the road and back again. Your heart is true. You're a pal in a confidant. Five sixteen. Amazon reportedly in talks with J.C. Penney for a possible deal. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, Amazon and J.C. Penney may be planning to join forces just days after the department store filed for bankruptcy. The two companies are reportedly in talks, and sources say it may be an opportunity for Amazon to expand its apparel business. J.C. Penney plans to close about 240 stores. A court in Texas is keeping the wheels of justice turning via Zoom. In what may be a first in this country jury selection in a case outside Dallas was held by video conference. Arizona will also allow juries to be selected remotely as courts deal with a huge case backlog. And you may soon be able to self-test for COVID-19 with your smartphone. A Utah researcher says he's working on a sensor about the size of a quarter that you plug into your phone. Then you cough, sneeze, or even just talk toward the sensor to see if you test positive. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. Let's check traffic at 517. Marcus, what's happening on the roadways? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> right now, things still look pretty good out there. So as we take a look at the map, uh, no accidents. That's the great news. Now, a little bit of slowdown along Highway 16, which is Bandera Road, outside 410, you can see. But that's in an area where we have a lot of uh, traffic lights. So could just be that some folks have some bad timing this morning. It's not working with them. Highway 151, 410 area, no problems there. 35 at uh, 1604, you can see those uh, construction lights are moving along and out of the way. 35 at FM 309. Just take a look at the volume of traffic. There's it gets a little bit busier, both in the north and in the southbound lanes. So, so far, no problems out there. There's the silver picture again. There's the silver picture again. Kind of a prickly, the silver picture again. prickly subject. Uh, we do have to talk this because this is from Yvonne Sherney, one of our loyal GMSA. We love viewers. Yvonne. Which I don't, I, now that I've seen them all, but purple cactus mm -hmm. like that, which is very cool looking. You ever seen that before? Uh, I never. I actually have, I think. The, uh -huh. the bulbs are the blooms, but not yeah. the. Not the actual. Actual cact cactus part of it, so. Very cool picture. Thank you very much for that, Yvonne. Appreciate that. All right, got clear skies this morning, and it, it is warm out there. A little bit warmer than where it should be. Normal high is uh, upper 60s. I think we will drop down, though, a couple of more notches. We're at 73 right now, 71 Port SA, some 60s in parts of the Hill Country. Actually, temperatures are up a little bit compared to this time yesterday. And the dew points are also up compared to this time yesterday. But we're going through that 24-hour cycle like we did 
yesterday. We started off a little more humidity and then dropped down in the afternoon. That's what helped temperatures to get up into the uh, mid 90s yesterday. And as far as uh, the humidity dew point temperatures today, they will be dropping down later on. We'll still have humidity here along the coastal plain typically, but uh, elsewhere drop down somewhat so dry air heats up a lot more easily and that's why temperatures are going to get even hotter than yesterday humidity will come back in overnight but then it won't drop down a heck of a lot throughout the afternoon tomorrow we will keep a bit more and that's going to be the trend going into the rest of the week to have more humidity around here that in turn is going to help the hold temperatures down but also increase clouds and our rain chances as well temperatures today computer models do have us getting into the upper 90s i'm going for 98 here in town but it's going to be you know in your backyard maybe 99 100 degrees a lot of triple digits off to the west and to the southwest later on. The record out at the airport, by the way, is 101. So we're going to be obviously within reach of that today. Tomorrow we start off right around low 70s again, and it won't be as hot in the afternoon, about mid 90s. So that'll be the trend. The temperatures start to go down somewhat, and eventually by the weekend we'll be down around the mid and some upper 80s around much of the area. No clouds uh, really today, and then tomorrow with the extra humidity in the morning, we'll have some morning clouds, maybe some mist and drizzle, sunshine in the afternoon. Then the clouds really kind of move back in here on Thursday. A couple of showers are going to be possible throughout the day Thursday. Jumping ahead, different computer model. Uh, some rain around here Thursday evening and Friday. We'll have some showers, even a couple of thunderstorms. Saturday, I think rain chances will start to go up, especially going into Sunday and Monday. And the reason for that is we've got this uh, low, which is going to be developing right now. Uh, the only rainmakers are kind of on the bookends, but as things go on in time, we will start to see a low kind of develop down here on top of us. And so what that's going to do, and if indeed this thing kind of cuts off and just sort of sits there, that would definitely be a rainmaker going in the first part of next week. So wait and see on that one, but that's how it's looking right now. So that's going to be upping rain chances, especially going into Sunday and Monday as it looks right now. 90 at noon today, sunny skies, hot already above the normal high temperature at noon and then a high temperature up to 98 degrees. So a lot of triple digits out there. And again, these numbers are in the shade. So if you're out in the direct sun, it's going to feel even hotter than that. 95 tomorrow, 90 on Thursday, so at least temperatures will start to decline mid 80s by the end of the week and the first part of the weekend, but also rain chances will start to go up. A couple of scattered showers Thursday, Friday, better chance of rain Saturday, and then right now it looks like especially Sunday and Monday for rain chances. Okay, so maybe hmm. a bit of a rain out. For Memorial Day, correct. For Memorial Day. Okay, duly noted. Thank you, Mike. 522, 73 degrees. Coming up next, several stars are reading aloud for charity. Add more on a comedian, Will Ferrell's fiery new music video coming up. Yeah, that's just weird. Pick three numbers, <laughs> six, three, five, five, four, Ferrell. eight. Yeah, no kidding. Daily four numbers, four, two, two, zero, fireball, six. Catch five numbers, two, eight, 16, 22, 28. Texas two-step, five, six, 12, 19, with a bonus ball of five. Are you ready to kick off the summer with the boss and some friends? CNN's David Daniel has that, plus a celebrity readathon and a music video you will have to see to believe. The Dropkick Murphys had some 10 million fans tune in when they live streamed their St. Patrick's Day show early in the pandemic. So to kick off summer, the Boston band is planning another free gig from one of the city's landmarks. Streaming out of Fenway from an otherwise empty Fenway Park will stream live on May 29th with a special guest, their longtime friend Bruce Springsteen, who will join the band remotely for a couple of songs. Hi, I'm Taika Waititi. Taika Waititi and some celebrity friends, including fellow Oscar winners, are reading the Roald Dahl classic James and the Giant Peach as a fundraiser for Partners in Health, a charity on the front lines of the COVID-19 crisis. New episodes are released Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays on the Roald Dahl HQ YouTube page. Yes, that's Will Ferrell and Rachel McAdams as Icelandic singers in Eurovision Song Contest, The Story of Fire Saga. The film poking fun at the massive music competition debuts on Netflix June 26th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Okay, right, so that's something. Yeah, so the reaction to the video has been that's so very much like Eurovision, it's just weird, and uh -huh. other people are like, 
let me know when it's funny. Ooh, mm -hmm. yeah, ouch. Some tough critics, especially when it comes to Will Ferrell. Some people can take him, some people... Yeah, sometimes he can be a little over the top, but sometimes he's really mm -hmm. funny. Mm -hmm. I like him. 527, 73 degrees. Coming up in our next half hour, much of the United States is in the process of reopening, but there's good news as a key model is now projecting less deaths for August. We're going to take a look at the numbers. Plus, more on a new local effort to test people living in nursing homes and get them the best care possible. Good morning. It's Tuesday, May 19th. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. If you love the South Texas heat, you're going to love Mike's forecast. I mean, you're really, really going to love it by this afternoon, right, Mike? Oh, yes, indeed. Actually, temperatures are going to be about 10 degrees above normal later on this afternoon. Yesterday, we hit the uh, mid 90s. We were at 94. That was just here in town and add to that. Right now, we're starting off at 73, 70 up the road toward Bernie State, 74 Canyon Lake, some 60s in the hill country, and the humidity is Okay, this morning it's a little on the higher side. It will be dropping down somewhat later on today. Molds on the high side and grass is low. We have it's kind of a pleasant morning. I mean, yes, it is late May, of course. Uh, sunny, near record high temperature. I'm going for 98 here in town. The record is 101, and we're going to be seeing a lot of triple digit readings, especially off to the west and southwest along the Rio Grande Valley. And you know, in your name, in your backyard, it may get up to close to 100 degrees. A few more clouds the rest of the week, and it won't be as hot. Temperatures will start to decline. Now, it won't be a you know just immediate drop, but be mid 90s tomorrow, and eventually down into the uh, kind of upper to even mid 80s. But also, then rain chances are going to be going up as we go in toward well the end of the week. A couple of showers here and there, and especially later on in the weekend. We'll talk about that. Closer look at the long Memorial Day weekend in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic. Here's Officer Mark. Trujillo. It's been quiet up to this point. Anything yet? So far, so good, Mike. So keep your fingers crossed if uh, you do have to head out later today. This is uh, 281 Acoma North and South Pond Lanes still running smoothly all the way up to 281 at Winding Way. Now, we are starting to get a little bit steadier stream on those southbound main lanes, but here in the downtown area, 35 at Flotus, no problems there. Now, no accidents on the highways in 10604. Starting to see some eastbound traffic coming in from Bernie towards San Antonio and then I-10 La Cantera from the other side. You can see just not too many folks out there right now. Leslie? Thank you very much, Marcus. New this morning, a deadly motorcycle crash southwest of downtown has hit one family twice as hard. San Antonio police say two members of that family were killed. Katrina Weber joins us live from where it all happened, which is on General Hudnell near Couples Road. Do police have any idea what caused it, Katrina? Well, they told us they're still investigating, but right now it does look like speed was a factor. The police got the call about the crash around midnight. They were a little bit hesitant to give out a whole lot of information, but a sergeant did confirm that the people who were killed involved the man who was driving the motorcycle and his son. And they told us it appears they were going too fast on this stretch of General Hudnell Road. Both of them died here at the scene. There was a traffic investigation team out here, and they are still working out all of the details about what happened. Now, I did check with the medical examiner's office just a few minutes ago, and they are not releasing any names or any other information about those people who were killed at this time. Reporting live on the southwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Some health officials fear a spike in coronavirus cases and deaths as states ease stay-at-home restrictions. And although 49 states have taken steps towards reopening, a key model lowers its death projection. CNN's John Lawrence reports. Many Americans moving forward cautiously. Masks are a must for all team members, uh, and we are uh, expecting everybody to follow social distancing guidelines. And optimistically. I'm ready. Let's go. Let's get this done. We got to do it sooner or later. While Americans are getting out more, the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation is now projecting about 143,000 COVID-19 deaths in the U.S. by August 4th. That's still up from earlier this month, but down nearly 4,000 deaths from a projection last week, surprising those involved with the data. There's not a strong correlation where, between where mobility's gone up and the trend in cases and deaths, even when we take into account uh, the increase in testing. A possible factor in the downward death estimate? Face coverings. 40% of the U.S. wears a mask all the time. About 80% wears a mask uh, sometimes. Uh, and that's probably helping separate out that impact of rising mobility. Despite the lower death projection, 
Doctors are still warning the public to remain vigilant. I'm glad that the, the projections have trended downward uh, over this past projection, but I, I'm still very worried. I hope people don't take this to say that this is necessarily definitely trending in the right direction. Things are okay, despite the fact that states are reopening. It's just the virus is still out there. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Also making headlines this morning, researchers warning of a potential tsunami in Alaska in a few decades. They say a melting glacier may destabilize a massive slope in Barry Arm. It's waterway. It's a waterway rather that contains a glacier about 60 miles from Anchorage. New York Times reports the researchers from 14 organizations started studying the area about a month ago. They say an earthquake, prolonged rain or heat wave could collapse the slope creating a tsunami hundreds of feet high. Wow. Gold prices are soaring this year. They could pass the all-time high of $1,900. In March, the prices dipped along with the rest of the market because of the coronavirus fears. But now gold prices are up nearly 15% so far this year. Right now, gold is trading at around $1,750. That's nearly an eight-year high. Federal Reserve has cut interest rates to zero, which has helped push gold higher. 535, 73 degrees. Still ahead, a closer look at how local health officials are ramping up COVID-19 tests for residents and staff at nursing homes. And next, President Trump defending the firing of the State Department's top inspector who is investigating the Secretary of State. And taking you outside with live cam. This weekend, of course, is a holiday weekend. Or next weekend is. And we might have rain. Five thirty-eight. new details this morning about the investigation into U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and the firing of the State Department's top watchdog. Top Republicans are now asking for an explanation. ABC's Alex Perche has the details. This morning, President Trump is defending the firing of State Department Inspector General Steve Linick, who was investigating Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. I was uh, happy to do it. Mike uh, requested that I do it. According to Congressman Elliot Engel, head of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, Linick was investigating Pompeo's declaration of an emergency last May to sell arms to Saudi Arabia, bypassing Congress. Linick was also investigating Pompeo's use of a staffer to run personal errands like dog walking and picking up dry cleaning. Maybe he's negotiating with Kim Jong-un, okay, about nuclear weapons so that he'd say, please, could you walk my dog? you mind walking my dog? And you know what? I'd rather have him on the phone with some world leader than have him wash dishes because maybe his wife isn't there. Pompeo tells the Washington Post he was unaware of the investigations, saying it was not possible that this decision was based on any effort to retaliate because I simply don't know. I'm not brief on these investigations. Pompeo said he fired Lenick because he wasn't happy with his performance. Meanwhile, this morning, in a surprise move, Attorney General William Barr appears to be breaking ranks with President Trump when it comes to investigating and prosecuting former President Barack Obama and former Vice President Joe Biden. And as long as I'm Attorney General, the criminal justice system will not be used for uh, partisan political ends. The president has suggested, without evidence, that Obama and Biden broke the law during the Russia investigation. Obamagate. It's been going on for a long time. Barr now declaring he does not see any evidence to justify a criminal investigation. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. Just about 541, 73 degrees. Coming up next, more on how some area nursing homes are changing their approach when it comes to making sure their residents are safe during the pandemic. There are big COVID-19 outbreaks in nursing homes all across the country. That has prompted a statewide effort to test residents and staff. New Braunfels and Bulverde Spring Branch firefighters will start conducting tests at nursing homes in Comal County. Tiffany Huertas has a look at their plan. We're a very, very vulnerable population. Starting tomorrow, the New Braunfels Fire Department will begin conducting COVID-19 tests at four of Comal County's six nursing homes. So we were requested by the uh, Texas Commission on Fire Protection and the Texas Division of Emergency Management to assist in testing um, all nursing home clients and staff uh, as part of the governor's orders to get those folks tested. Fire Chief Patrick O'Connell says they will be testing about 1,200 people over the next four days. He says they will begin with testing staff. Once they get most of the staff tested, 
the staff can then assist them in testing uh, the residents. Joining us on Tuesdays, as she usually does, Dr. Ruth Bergeron with the Long School of Medicine. During an interview last week with KSAT, Dr. Ruth Bergeron explained why the death toll from the virus is so high in nursing homes. She says people in nursing homes have multiple underlying medical conditions, and the living arrangements within nursing homes also play a factor. Most nursing homes don't have the luxury of having a private bedroom with a private bath for each individual, and there are frequently roommates and shared facilities. Dr. Bergeron says another increased factor is the mobility of caregivers. Caregivers go from room to room, and so you can have spread if the caregivers are not maximally using their PPE and remembering about their hand hygiene. I'm Tiffany Huertas. To see more stories like this, check out KSAT News at 9, Monday through Friday. Stock starting on a good note this morning after surging on hopes of a coronavirus vaccine. The Dow and S&P 500 saw their biggest gains in six weeks. Federal Reserve Chairman also says the central bank might pump more cash into the economy. The market would need several more days like this to reach its value before the coronavirus pandemic began. The pandemic may be giving a boost to mainstream beer brands like Bud Light and Coors Light. Sales of bigger brands are up in the first quarter as beer drinkers started shopping more at big box stores. They are now buying less at tap rooms where craft beers are typically sold. By now, you've probably seen Facebook's new customizable avatars popping up in your news feed. You done yours yet? Not yet. I did mine. But if you've tried to make one and you have been unsuccessful, you're not alone. Courtney Friedman has answers. If you're having trouble making a personalized Facebook avatar, here's a checklist of things you can do to make sure the problem isn't on your end. One, sounds obvious, but double check to make sure the Facebook app is updated to the latest version. Number two, click on the big blue Facebook icon at the bottom of your phone screen. Then scroll down and select See More. Next, click on Avatars, then click on Next, and then Get Started. One Reddit user also recommended turning on location for Facebook. Another Reddit user said they were able to get their own avatar after seeing their friends. If one of your Facebook friends shares theirs, there should be a button on the lower right-hand corner saying try it. And if you still aren't able to create a Facebook avatar, be patient. Last week, the head of the Facebook app said the characters are still being rolled out. And or coming up. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Coming up in our 6 a.m. hour, we've made some new Facebook avatars of our own. Each of us has one. Our Sarah Costa is going to show you how they turned out. So stay tuned for that. That was uh, Courtney Friedman reporting. I haven't done it yet. I, I'm, I'm not on Facebook all the time, but yeah. I think eventually I'll okay. But this is not a right now thing for me. It wasn't easy. I didn't find it hard to do at all. Yeah, it's yeah. It's kind of fun. I like to make them. We were talking about yesterday. Some of them are awesome. I mean, they're really close to the actual person and some some are not so much yeah not so yeah. close that's how you see yourself that's not how we see you uh, exactly <laughs> let's see how traffic is right now with officer marcus trujillo why don't we make avatars for each other that Ooh. would be me <laughs> is that good or bad <laughs> you tell me mark <laughs> okay marcus, that could be a, that could be a dangerous game right now as we take a look at the area uh, still looking pretty good on the highways itself so let's take a look at trans guide uh, starting to see some increases in the traffic this is highway 151 at 410 right now this is probably the busiest uh, trans guide shot that we have at this time Okay, I've just been informed by our producer Hardy that mm -hmm. they made avatars for all of us. Oh, they made it for me. us. Okay, yes. so who do who do we have to thank for those avatars? We'll find who out. Is, okay, yeah, so who, whose vision said, of I mean, us is this? Is what I want to know. Is it know, right? Sarah's vision or is it Joy's vision? Yeah, or Hardy, did you say next hour is when we're coming out with those? Okay, okay. We were all right. Here yesterday, Leslie, we were talking about our former coworker Jeremy. Yes. His avatar, it was a picture of David Beckham. It says, look, looks just like me, even on bad days. So. <laughs> wow. Right. Uh, not <laughs> even close. Uh, take a look at this picture. Beautiful, beautiful flower. It is a night flowering cactus, apple cereus. Don't know about that, but wow. It's pretty. That's very, very pretty. Thank you very much. Again, we've had some gorgeous flower pictures that folks have been sending in the past couple of months. Um, oh, there's a nice shot. There is the uh, wax, waxing waning. Tell me, I looked it up. I don't know. Crescent, I, it, crescent, crescent moon. 
I'm going wax, wax, wax off. And we're already starting to see the uh, glow of the sunrise out there. What a beautiful, beautiful picture. And do you have the app? Oh, darn. I want to. Anyway, 73 degrees right now. I don't. I trust you on this stuff. Yeah, I, that's, I, I that's see, for you to tell us. Can't, can't tell you what I had for dinner last night. Can't tell you what I looked up yesterday at this time, whether it's waxing or waning. Uh, 70, Bernie, 68 in Bandera. And uh, we do have a little bit of humidity out there this morning. Uh, dew point temperatures, the measure of moisture in the atmosphere, are uh, about mid and even some upper 60s. So you feel the humidity. It's not like it slaps you in the face like a wet towel, but that does look... It is a waning crescent, so it is approaching the uh, the new moon phase. Uh, dew point temperatures will drop down somewhat later on this afternoon, so it'll be a bit more comfortable, kind of like yesterday. We'll still have plenty of uh, humidity and higher dew points down there along the coastal plain. Humidity comes up overnight again, and then it's going to really start to kind of stay in here a bit more. So the drop won't be quite as noticeable in the uh, humidity later on tomorrow afternoon, and then as it pumps on in here. That's going to help out with clouds as well as some showers as we head on in toward the weekend. So as far as temperatures, we are going to be making it up into the upper 90s later on today, going for 98 exactly here in town. This model says 99 and a lot of uh, triple digit temperatures off to the west. So it's going to be a scorcher. And again, the record here in town is 101. So we're going to be obviously very close to that back down to the low 70s tomorrow. And then it won't be quite as hot mid 90s, still well above normal tomorrow. But that'll be the trend for temperatures to make a decline toward the weekend as the rain chances do start to uh, go up as we approach the weekend. So tomorrow morning we'll have a few extra clouds around here, maybe a little speck of mist just because of the humidity is going to be pumping on in here and then more sunshine in the afternoon. But then Thursday, a lot more in the way of clouds and we'll also have a chance for some showers uh, Thursday night going into Friday showers, perhaps a thunderstorm or two and some around here on Saturday. I don't think it's going to be a rain out on Saturday, but it looks like it will be rainier though as we go into Sunday and Monday the way things are setting up a lot of uh, long range computer models have a kind of a, an upper low sitting on top of us which would be a better chance for some rain later in the weekend 90 at noon today already above the normal high temperatures sunny skies winds out of the uh, southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour we'll keep a bit more humidity around this morning and then it'll be easing off later on this afternoon 98 high temperature and that's in the shade plenty of sunshine out there and we'll see a lot of triple digit readings in the Rio Grande Valley. 95 tomorrow, 90 Thursday. So at least temperatures will start to go down, but the humidity is going to be going up. And a couple of showers are possible Thursday, Friday, a few showers around, and then improving rain chances, especially it looks like Sunday and Monday. Thank you, Mike. Waning crescent. So it's waning small. Yeah. crescent. Thank you, Marcus. Waning crescent. Thank you, Thank you Marcus. You, Marcus. <laughs> what would we do without you? Be in trouble. 552, 73 degrees. Coming up next, a big screen film based on a video game finally headed for DVD and Blu ray this week. Here are your lottery numbers pick three, six, three, five, Fireball eight, Daily four, four, two, two, zero, Fireball six. Cash five numbers two, eight, sixteen, twenty two, twenty eight, and your Texas two step, five, six, twelve, nineteen, with a bonus ball of five. Good Tuesday morning to you. Coming up here on GMA, the latest on that stunning announcement by President Trump, revealing that he's been taking the malaria drug to prevent getting the coronavirus. That is the same drug that the FDA has warned against taking. So Dr. Ashton is with us this morning to break it all down right here on GMA. I'm Sonic, a little ball of super energy in an extremely handsome package. Sonic the Hedgehog took longer than expected to reach theaters. Now it's speeding onto DVD. The Blu-ray and 4K Ultra HD versions include deleted scenes, featurettes, and while supplies last, a limited edition Sonic comic book. I wrote this spell so I could see for myself who my boys grew up to be. Another family-friendly film landing on disc this week is Onward, the animated adventure about brothers trying to use magic to bring back their long-deceased father. Other movies going from theaters to DVD this week include The Way Back, starring Ben Affleck as a man seeking redemption through coaching basketball, the horror sequel Brahms The Boy 2, starring Katie Holmes, and Emma, starring Anya Taylor-Joy in the latest take on the Jane Austen novel. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. South Texas Blood and Tissue Center running low on blood and can use your help. Right now, the center is down to a two-day inventory. 
They say the need has increased 49% the past week, likely due to elective surgeries resuming across the state. Help meet the need. There are plenty of opportunities to give this week. A three-day blood drive at the Alamo Dome starts Thursday. Donors will receive a $10 HEB gift card, and for every donation, $5 will be donated to the San Antonio Food Bank. You can schedule an appointment by calling 210-731-5590 or visit SouthTexasBlood.org. And, of course, you can find all of this information on our website at ksat.com. So glad you're with us on this Tuesday morning. Still ahead in the next hour of GMSA, single parenting can be exhausting in the best of times. And right now, the stressors may be even more difficult. We have some steps single parents can take to find support. And Trans Guide, I-10 at Ralph Fair Road. It's still dark out there, but the sun is coming up. There's the, another view at 10 at Bernie Stage, not too far away. We'll get an update on time saver traffic from Marcus coming up. You're watching GMSA. We now know the latest plan and the latest date for reopening the state of Texas. Good morning, I'm Max Mazzi. All of the details and what you need to know. A potentially promising sign in the fight for a coronavirus vaccine. Also, President Trump announcing that he's been taking hydroxychloroquine to protect himself from COVID. I'm Alex Perche in Washington. I'll have details coming up. And taking you outside with live cam. Take a look at your television, everybody. Sun's starting to come up. As it peaks over the horizon, it looks beautiful. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It's Tuesday, May 19th. And as the banner said on our sunrise shot, near record heat today. It is going to be a scorcher today. So make sure you're hydrated and don't forget your sunscreen, right, Mike? Oh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Because it's going to be, and, and even, you know, wear your sunscreen at all times, like a lot of doctors say, yeah. but today, especially take it easy if you're outside, especially in the direct sun, because uh, it's going to feel a whole heck of a lot hotter than that when you're in the uh, direct sun. First of all, though, that is the, we figured it out, waning, waning, the waning crescent moon. Crescent. So, you yes. we wab it, you? As the camera gets out of focus, darn, but uh, it's gorgeous out. It's, yeah, it's going the wrong direction. Oh, there yeah. it goes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there we go. Nicely like, done. Like trying to focus on your phone, you know, and you know. <laughs> anyway, uh, obviously the sunrise is going to be spectacular this morning, and the uh, temperatures were down to 72 right now. We may drop down another couple of notches uh, before it's all said and done. 68 Bandera, 67 up the road in Comfort, and the humidity is okay this morning. It is up there a little bit, but it's not like it's wet towel sort of humidity. Uh, mold is on the high side. Little bits of grass are showing up. And throughout the rest of today, we will have temperatures that are really going to heat up quickly this morning. And the humidity will be dropping down as the day goes on. Kind of like yesterday, we'll be up to 90 already at noon. So we gain about 20 between now and then. And we're already above the normal high temperature at noon. And then we continue from there. Yesterday was mid 90s. Today it's going to be upper 90s here in town. The record is 101. And we are going to be seeing a lot of triple digit readings, especially off to the uh, west and to the southwest later on today. Now, the good news is temperatures will make a slow decline throughout the rest of the week. We get more humidity, though. And we also get some rain chances. We'll talk about that and take a closer look at the weekend coming up. Time saver traffic. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo and... I don't think you've reported one accident yet this morning, have you? Not yet. We're off to a pretty good start, so that's the great news. Traffic's still flowing uh, fairly well, so no slowdowns at this point. Let's take a look at a couple of transguided cameras. As you can see 35 of Flotus in the downtown vicinity. No problems, and I-10 at 1604 east and westbound lanes are moving along nicely all the way through I-10 at La Cantera. So a steady stream there on the eastbound lanes, westbound, not so bad. And then out there, I-10 at Ralph R. Road, still more than enough room out there. Mark and Leslie? Thank you very much, Marcus. New this morning, three people were stabbed after a family violence disturbance on the city's northeast side. San Antonio police say it happened just before 1030 last night at the Salado Creek Apartments in the 3400 block of Salado Creek. Officers say when they arrived, they found three people with stab wounds. Someone in the family got upset, reportedly took out a knife and cut them. No one was taken to the hospital in serious condition, but one woman was transported with stab wounds in stable condition. Police say the suspect drove off in a tan-colored vehicle. And there was also reports of another cutting shortly after. About 15 minutes later, in the 5300 block of Sage Rock Pass, officers say on the scene, the vehicle on your screen 
The vehicle that you see on your screen is from the previous stabbing call. The victim was treated at the scene. Also new overnight, San Antonio police say a teenager was shot at overnight. According to police, it happened around 145 this morning in the 3500 block of Southton View. The teen reportedly grazed by shotgun pellets in the ankle in a drive by. He was not taken to the hospital. Suspect was last seen leaving the scene in a white vehicle. The victim is expected to be OK. Well, Texas has officially entered a new phase in the plan to reopen the economy. Governor Greg Abbott made some big announcements at a press conference yesterday afternoon. Max Massey joins us live downtown. So what were some of the dates that people should be aware of, Max? Yesterday actually ended up being one of those important dates because some of the guidelines went into effect immediately. But two more dates that people here in Texas should be aware of this coming Friday, May 22nd, and then May 31st. So let's take a look at what we know this morning as of the guidelines, what is opening, and those future dates. So first, let's go over what reopened yesterday. Child care centers, office buildings with 25% maximum capacity, personal care services, things like massages and beauty services. Then youth sports and then clubs, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts. And if you saw our GMSA at 9 a.m. yesterday, we showed you gyms are now reopened. Then let's go to this Friday, May 22nd. Bars, they are allowed to open at 25 percent capacity. Bowling alleys, bingo halls, skating rinks, rodeos. And then we have zoos, aquariums and the caverns. Fast forward to the end of the month, May 31st, youth day camps, overnight youth day camps and for all you sports fans out there, pro sports, some of which include football and baseball. Now, school districts, they've been given the go-ahead to host summer school, but social distancing must be maintained. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we talked about bars reopening this Friday. Coming up at 630, I'm going to go over the restrictions, over the guidelines, and what you need to know before you hit that Friday happy hour. Mark, Leslie. All right, thank you very much. Well, we now have the latest numbers of coronavirus cases in Bear County, so let's take a look. The total has gone up to 2,213. That's an increase of 93 cases over the past three days, 72 from Friday, 16 from Saturday, and five new cases Sunday. 23 of those cases were reported out in the community and 23 in congregant settings like jails or nursing homes. The death toll stands at 62. Meanwhile, the city says it now has the capacity to test 3,000 people a day for the virus. Over in New Braunfels Fire Department, the uh, New Braunfels Fire Department began testing, uh, conducting COVID-19 tests at four of Comal County six nursing homes today. The city will be testing about 1,200 people over the next four days because residents living in those homes are at higher risk. And Dr. UT Health San Antonio explained why the death toll from the virus is so high in nursing homes. She says people in nursing homes not only have multiple underlying medical conditions, but the living arrangements within nursing homes also plays a factor. Most nursing homes don't have the luxury of having a private bedroom with a private bath for each individual, and there are frequently roommates and shared facilities. They'll begin testing staff members. There are 71 positive cases confirmed in Comal County. A spokesperson for the county says they haven't had any positive tests come from nursing homes yet. Well, USAA is extending work from home guidelines until September 1st. Employees can begin to return to work voluntarily starting June 15th. The pilot program will take place at the San Antonio, Phoenix, Tampa and Colorado Springs campuses. USAA will also return more money to policyholders due to fewer drivers on the road. In a statement, USAA said the pilot program will consist of a total of approximately 1,000 employees across the four campuses, and participation will be on a 100% volunteer basis. Meanwhile, as America continues to move back towards its pre-pandemic life, there's some new hope when it comes to a vaccine. ABC's Alex Brashe shares the details, plus what President Trump had to say about taking a controversial drug for the past week and a half. President Trump making a surprise announcement. I'm taking it, hydroxychloroquine. When right start. now, yeah. The president saying he's been taking the drug used to treat malaria as a protective treatment for coronavirus. A couple of weeks ago, I started taking it. Because I think it's good. I've heard a lot of good stories. For some two months, the president has been promoting hydroxychloroquine as a treatment for the virus. The president saying he asked the White House doctor if he could take it, even though he says he does not have the virus or any symptoms. 
But just last month, the FDA warned against using it for COVID-19 outside of hospitals or clinical trials because it could cause heart problems. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi voicing concern on CNN. He's our president, and I would rather he not be taking something that has not been approved uh, by the scientist, especially in his age group and in his, shall we say, weight group, what is morbidly obese, they say. So I, I, uh, I, I think it was, it's not a good idea. Meanwhile, a potential breakthrough on the vaccine front. Moderna Labs, an American company working on a vaccine, says all 45 of their test patients are producing antibodies that fight the disease. To um, have one small role in, in just getting beyond this pandemic is, is uh, an amazing opportunity. Norman Hume of Atlanta is one of them. He received his second dose of the vaccine Monday. In the early results, the 45 patients developed the same level of antibodies as someone who's recovered from COVID-19. The vaccine will have to pass more phases of testing, and if the results continue to prove positive, Moderna hopes the drug can be ready by the end of the year. And now even more states are reopening. More than 130,000 auto workers were back on the job Monday, the first time in eight weeks. By Wednesday, Connecticut will begin to reopen, meaning that all 50 states will have eased restrictions. Cases still rising in at least 10 of them. At least another two dozen have hit a plateau. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. San Antonio ISD holding a graduation ceremony for the class of 2020 at Alamo Stadium coming up in June. Superintendent Pedro Martinez says the district is uh, to honor its student achievements with in-person ceremonies. Everyone attending will need to follow social, social distancing guidelines and will be required to wear a mask. More information on SAISD's graduation ceremony right now on KSAT.com. 610, 72 degrees. Still to come, law enforcement officials around the country say there's a surge in reckless driving and street racing on empty roads. What they're doing to crack down on drivers. Plus GMSA getting in on the social media trend. After the break, Sarah Costa will be live to tell us more about it. And this is one of those, ooh, ah, moments. Take a look at your television. Gorgeous sunrise. Six fourteen. If you've been on social media lately, chances are you've seen characters that look like your friends and family in your news feed. We're talking about those new Facebook avatars. But if you haven't seen all those look-alike emojis on Facebook, we've got you covered. Sarah Costa joins us live from home to give us a scoop on how to make your very own. And we understand you didn't just make yours. Y'all made one for all of us? Yes, I, I took it upon myself to design all of the GMSA crew's um, avatars, but we'll get to that in just a bit. I mean, call us vain, right? We can't get enough of things that look like ourselves. We just love seeing what we look like. And over the past week, I'm sure you've seen several of these avatars pop up on your Facebook news feed. So how do you make your own? Well, here we go. Open up your Facebook app on your phone. Click on the three lines button in the bottom right hand corner on the menu bar at the bottom of the app. That's how you get to your profile page. Scroll all the way down when you get to that menu and you'll see the see more button. The second choice should be avatars and it'll take you step by step on making your very own avatar. The more honest you are, the better. But I want to share some of the newsroom avatar comparisons. Here is mine that I did yesterday oh, morning. That's good. That's a good um, one. I want to say that I want to say the clothing choices are really weird. They don't give you a lot, and they're very um, they're very unisex. So they, I would I would be making like a guy, and then a, a dress would pop up on it. It was actually really funny to see like some of the guys in the newsroom wearing dresses via <laughs> Facebook <laughs> avatars. But here's Katrina Weber's. Here's that's a good one. Here's too. Katrina Weber. She, Katrina made her own. I think Katrina did a great job. Yeah. Um, and then also, okay, here is Mark's avatar. I think Mark's avatar is spot on. Oh what do you guys God. think? Oh That's my gosh. Pretty darn good. Yes, yeah, suit and tie and everything, the glasses, yep. perfect. Yep. It's good, right? I'm happy with it. I'm very happy with it. I, I love Mark. Awesome. Mark's avatar is probably my favorite. Thanks. <laughs> well, here's here's Leslie's avatar. I, um, love I think Leslie it. Leslie's just the cutest little Barbie doll ever. Aww. So Leslie was super easy to make. Let's I go. love that one. Um, also, 
Uh, uh, Leslie, I wanted to find you like a really cute outfit, but it was. Oh yeah, Mike's avatar is was hilarious because when I was talking about the the dresses popping up on guys, of course it popped up on Mike's. Um, <laughs> well, but wait, 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 Marcus's Sarah, avatar. Sarah, Sarah, that would have been okay because he does play Mother yes. Ginger every year the for nutcracker. the Nutcracker. Oh, I know, so. I know. We've had this whole this whole chat with Mike, and he loves to dress up and you know put the stage makeup on. Um, <laughs> um, but here is Marcus's avatar. It was weird right. because I made an avatar of Marcus smiling, but it didn't look like him, so I had to make <laughs> a <is>. sarcastic <laughs> avatar. That, that is me smiling. That's <laughs> yeah. Oh, we love him. Great job, Sarah. That's so much fun. <laughs> I'm so... Um, it, it took a long time to make, but I. it was really weird because... Um, I had to stare at a lot of y'all's Facebook photos for like, <laughs> a, it was, I, was, <laughs> I, I had your face like zoomed in to see like your nose and eyes features. So I feel like I really got to know you guys by zooming in on your facial features. Well, I'm very um, flattered with yeah, the avatar I'm you glad created I know you guys better. it could have been mean and you could have been, a, could have been a holder for a ball game. Yeah, you nailed it. Knocked it out of the park. Sarah Costa, thanks so much for leading the way when it comes to our Facebook avatars. Not a problem. My pleasure. That was really fun. It was awesome. Let's check traffic real quick with uh, Mr. Clap, clap, clap. clap, clap. <laughs> right now as we take a look at the roadways, traffic's still moving along fairly well. 410 at Highway 151, no problems. And 35604, well, we've gotten that uh, tra the construction rather moved out of the way. No problems there. 281 at Nakoma North and South on Lanes, running smoothly all the way through 281 at Winding Way. Were you gentlemen okay with your avatars? My hair wasn't gray enough. It wasn't well, great. Though. I thought it was. Hey, but great. it had the pocket square. It yes, it, it did. did. Although, if she was looking at the Facebook profile picture, uh -huh. I think that's one of those promotional pictures we took here. Probably yeah, probably like oh, 15, 15, years, 15 years, ago. years ago. 15 years ago. So probably oh, you had why. a lot uh, less gray. To update it so anyway mm -hmm. hey uh take a look outside and i was trying to i don't think our camera's going to go up any higher than this and the moon has go? risen up out of the picture i think it's behind that banner but it was that little sliver of a waning crescent moon which was absolutely gorgeous out there but I mean, look at that sky that is so pretty speaking of beautiful celestial pictures look at this one that somebody sent in wait where'd it go did i Oh, darn it. Hang on a second. Did I mess up here? One second, folks. Where is my KSAC Connect picture? There it is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like somebody did a, a time lapse out there, mm -hmm. and that's absolutely gorgeous. So I know those are celestial objects, but that looks like the traffic in Stone Oak, too, on any given day. <laughs> that's, that's true, and that would be the North Star right there. Mm -hmm. That looks pretty cool. Yeah, everything spins around that. So thank you very much for that. Once again, look at the uh, sunrise. And now getting to uh, the uh, Weather 101, uh, talking about the rainfall. We're pretty much on track right now. Just about uh, a little bit less than four, uh, half an inch, uh, four tenths of an inch behind for the month of May. We picked up an inch and three quarters, obviously, a lot of that came more than an inch came last Friday night since March. And this is going with the meteorological springtime since March. We've had uh, just over six inches of rain again. That's just about a uh, half an inch below normal and about an inch behind for the year. Obviously, we can't make that up necessarily, but in the past, you know, few weeks past in a couple of months. We're not doing too bad as far as rain is concerned. We do have more in the forecast. 72 here in town, 71 Bulverde and 60s in parts of the uh, hill country. And the humidity, which has gone up a little bit this morning, is going to be dropping down somewhat later on this afternoon. So it will be a bit more comfortable like it was yesterday. Maybe not quite as dry. Plus, with temperatures in the upper 90s, we are going to see uh, some heat index readings that are going to be creeping up into the low hundreds. If indeed your temperature isn't up into the low hundreds, which is going to be the situation in the Rio Grande Valley. Humidity comes back up tomorrow morning, but then sticks around. So it, that'll be the start of a much more humid period going in toward the weekend, as well as uh, starting off or getting into a more rainy period as we go in toward the weekend. So humidity stays very high. Temperatures, again, today we're going to be in the upper 90s, those triple digits off from along the Rio Grande Valley. And then tomorrow we start off right around about the same temperature. It's not going to get as hot in the afternoon. Still going to be pretty darn hot out there, but that's going to be the trend for temperatures to uh, start to go down. And as far as rainfall, well, we're not going to have any clouds even today. 
nor really tomorrow, except in the morning, a couple of clouds here, and then they really start to move on in here Thursday. Then we get into Friday and the weekend. We're going to start to see better chance for some uh, showers, a couple of thunderstorms here and there, a few on Saturday as well. But it does look like Sunday rain chances are definitely going to start to go up as a low starts to kind of move on in here and almost sit right on top of us. That's what it's looking like as of right now. 90 today at noon, sunny skies already above the normal high temperature at noon and then high temperature today up to 98. The record's 101, obviously real close to it. And if any of that humidity is kind of lingering in there, even though it's going to be dropping down somewhat, we'll still have heat index readings above that into the low hundreds and a lot of those triple digit readings in the Rio Grande Valley. Tomorrow, 95, 90 Thursday, a couple of showers are possible. Thursday, Friday, a few of them, and then better rain chances. I think right now, especially Sunday and Monday as things are shaping up. All right, thank you, Mike. We're in a little behind 622, 72 degrees on DMSA. Reckless and dangerous driving on empty roads across the country. Up next, the warning from police departments as we head towards Memorial Day weekend. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a Polar Pop. We are Circle K. I am totally blind. And non-24 can make me show up too early or too late or make me feel like I'm not really there. Talk to your doctor and call 844-234-2424. The new house is amazing, so much character. Original crown molding, walk-in closets. We do have a wrap problem. At least GEICO makes bundling our home and car insurance easy. It does help us save. For bundling made easy, go to GEICO.com. Saturdays happen. Pain happens. Ooh. Aleve it. Aleve is proven stronger and longer on pain than Tylenol. <laughs> when pain happens, Aleve it. All day strong. In this morning's GMA First Look, it's the coronavirus side effect no one saw coming. As we head toward Memorial Day weekend, an urgent new warning with more and more dangerous scenes like these. Watch as cars speed through red lights, causing crash after crash. As we move toward a new normal, we need to get there safely. Don't speed. Don't drive distracted. GMA riding along with Connecticut State Police to see just how fast drivers are going. Within minutes, Trooper Kurt Booker is pulling someone over. State police, the reason why I stopped you, I got you 93. Is there any justification for your speed today? Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you what police are doing across the country to crack down on this dangerous trend and how you can stay safe on the roads. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. Your time now is 627. It is 72 degrees outside. Delta putting more planes in the air again. Just ahead, how the airline still plans to keep passengers safe. A single motorcycle crash has killed two members of one family. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have that story. Good morning, I'm Max Massey. Governor Greg Abbott announcing new guidelines for reopening the state of Texas, one of which reopening bars this coming Friday. So I'm going to explain what you need to know before you hit that Friday happy hour. Okay. Outside with live cam, see how things are looking out there. It's going to be a hot one today. Near record temperatures. Mike standing by. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, May 19th. Well, that's a beautiful sunrise, which we'll get to mm -hmm. in a minute. But first, how's traffic looking? So far, so good. We've been very, very fortunate this morning. Uh, the construction that we did have earlier this morning moved up out of the way good. and no accidents so far on all the highways. Forgot to ask, is today another ozone action day or are we off the no, board No, I did not see anything okay. as far as uh, being any sort of an air quality kind of a day. Um, you do want to obviously take it easy if you're outside today just because of that that heat out there if you're in the direct sun. The sun's going to be popping up in just a couple of minutes. Lots of clear skies obviously. 72 in town. We are still four above normal. I think we may drop down another degree or two uh, before it's all said and done. Mid 60s in Portions of the hill country and the humidity is 
okay this morning. You notice it when you step outside. It's not oppressively humid though. Molds on the high side, grass is low, and throughout the rest of today, I'm going to call it a, a pleasant morning. Near record high temperature. The record in town is 101, going for 98 for a high later on today. Lots of sunshine out there. And tomorrow, we are not going to be quite as hot. We'll start to see a decline in temperatures to eventually get down to the 80s and even mid 80s by later on in the weekend. But we are going to see an increase in the clouds an increase in the humidity as well as rain chances. A couple of showers are going to be possible Thursday, Friday, and then especially later in the weekend. We do have a, a better chance for some rain. So enjoy uh, somewhat lower humidity later on today because like I said, humidity will definitely start to go up. Details on that in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now and and boy, there, I don't think you've mentioned an accident this morning. It's been easy this morning. Hopefully the rest of the community will be just as easy for folks that do have to venture out there on the roadways. As we take a look, nothing on the map that uh, should slow you down. Let's take a look at a couple of Transguide cameras there. I-10 and Medical. Eastbound and westbound lanes, no problem. Then north and southbound lanes at 281 right there at Hildebrand. Folks just zipping along through that curve. And then 151, 410, so far, no problems there. Leslie? Thanks, Marcus. San Antonio police say speed may be to blame for a motorcycle crash that killed two members of a family. It happened overnight on the southwest side. Our Katrina Weber is there on General Hudnell near Couples Road, and we understand, Katrina, it was a father and son who were killed. That's according to the officers who were out there. I did check with the medical examiner's office a little while ago, and they were still working to notify the relatives, so they were not able to offer any names or ages at this point. The police got the call about this crash right around midnight here in the 2400 block of General Hudnell, right under the Couples Road Bridge. Police told us both people who were killed were on a motorcycle. The one who they identified as the father was driving. They were not able to offer many details on how the crash happened. Police only said that it appeared that they were speeding when the motorcycle crashed. Now, they do caution that their traffic officers are still investigating, so this is only a preliminary uh, information at this point. Reporting live on the southwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. As Texas continues to reopen the state's economy amid the pandemic, Governor Greg Abbott made a big move yesterday. Bars are allowed to reopen Friday, but it's going to look a little different. Max Massey following this story closely joins us live downtown. Max, good morning. What can Texans expect? Well, this Friday is a big day. Bars can reopen. One of the well-known restrictions, 25% maximum capacity. But there's a lot more guidelines that the uh, governor actually issued. Now, we took a look at the guidelines, and let's break them down. So take a look at your screen right now. Per the mandate, here is a checklist for bars reopening. Customers can't loiter at the bar. They can't loiter in those common areas, and they should remain seated at tables inside. Now, bars can actually only provide service to those people seated. Parties should maintain at least six feet of distance from other parties while at the bar and activities that would enable close contact, not limited to, but including dancing, are discouraged at bars. And anywhere you walk should be kept clear. Also, bars do need to have a designated staff member to make sure that customers are social distancing. There also has to be a hand sanitizing station when you walk in, and you can't have tables of more than six people. And guys, these are just a few of the points on the governor's checklist. We're going to have a full list of that on KSAT.com. You can check out right now. Also important to mention, we do expect to hear from the governor live at our news at noon today. Mark, Leslie. Thank you, Max. In your morning headlines, President Donald Trump is defending the firing of State Department Inspector General Steve Linick. Linick was investigating Secretary of State Mike Pompeo's declaration of an emergency last May to sell arms to Saudi Arabia. He was also investigating Pompeo's use of a staffer to run personal errands. Pompeo says he was unaware of the investigations and that Linick was fired because he wasn't happy with his performance. Also in your morning headlines, Delta Airlines are reportedly ready to put more planes in the air. The new plan calls for Delta to add flights back to its schedule, but there's an effort to keep planes no more than 60% full. Doing this will obviously allow for more social distancing between passengers. The plan expected to last at least through July. As businesses continue to reopen their doors in and around San Antonio, jobs in all sorts of fields need to be filled. Here are a few that may interest you. PepsiCo is looking for a warehouse worker. Applicants must be 18 or older and be able to lift 20 to 45 pounds. This is a seasonal position and it pays $18.70 an hour. 
The Texas Department of Transportation needs a contract specialist. Requirements for this job include experience in contrast administration, bookkeeping, and accounting. At Rackspace, looking for a technology project manager, applicants must have a bachelor's degree in technology or business. A minimum of five years experience in software development or project management is required. If you have any interest in these jobs, you can go to workintexas.com for more information. Time check, 636, 72 degrees. Single parenting can be exhausting in the best of times, and right now the stressors may be even more difficult. Coming up, steps single parents can take to find support. 640, welcome back to Good Morning San Antonio. Here in the U.S., almost one in four moms are taking on the challenge of raising kids alone as a single parent. Coronavirus and social distancing is required to help keep families healthy during the pandemic, but it may be putting added strain on singles as access to their support systems diminish. Stephanie Cerna has tips for single moms to promote positive parenting during the crisis. Right now, eight-year-old Liliana Brewer plays alone. There's the river. You want to see it? Sure. Daily hugs from her grandmother reduced to a few minutes of FaceTime. School is a computer on her kitchen table. I'm missing my friends and my teacher. And Liliana is not alone. Her mom, Jessica, misses her network, too. Your close family members, your friends with kids, you know, having someone else to be able to help you parent, to give you those breaks. Zoe Taylor is a family scientist at Purdue University and a single mom. Taylor studies resilience in single parent families who are especially vulnerable to hardships. They have the emotional and often the financial responsibility um, without a lot of those supports. Taylor says there are over 8 million single parents in the U.S. and the pandemic is putting them at greater risk for depression. She says it can also affect how they parent. So Taylor advises these parents to take care of their needs first. Stephanie Serna, KSET 12 News. Amid all the craziness and uncertainty right now, here's a feel-good story. Two kittens stuck in a storm drain oh. in far North Bear County were brought to safety by volunteer firefighters. Sarah Costa joins us live from home with the story that has a perfect ending. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning. It kind of does read like a child. A child storybook, but now those two very cold and hungry kittens, they are safe and they have new homes. This after Sunday afternoon, loud meowing was heard from a storm drain and the volunteer Bear County and Boulevardy Fire Department was called out. That storm drain is right behind Kinder Ranch Elementary School in far north Bear County after someone walking in the neighborhood heard that meowing coming from the storm drain. The firefighters climbed down the drain and about 100 feet in, they found a very cold and hungry gray little kitten. That kitten was adopted immediately by a resident in the neighborhood who works closely with an animal shelter. The kitten was checked out by a vet and only weighs one pound and was one month old. Then again, Monday afternoon, firefighters were called out again to the same, the same storm drain location after another kitten was heard meowing loudly from inside. This time, firefighters climbed 400 feet down the drain to find that second kitten. Firefighters say this second, ki this second kitten had a loud set of lungs on it because it could be heard from very far away. Now, that kitten was also taken by someone. It was a staff member at the Kinder Ranch Elementary School. So now both cats have found forever homes and are no longer cold and hungry. Reporting live from home, Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Mark and oh, Leslie. Thank you for the double dose of awe, Sarah Acosta. They're so cute. I love that. 643. Let's check the roadways once again. Mark, is anything new? Map is looking great this morning with no accidents on any of the highways. So uh, everything in the green. Let's go over to Transguide right now. You can see firsthand 281 winding way southbound lanes of 21. Bless you. Starting to pick up in traffic from 1604 headed back towards the airport area. We're also seeing increases in the traffic here in the downtown city. 35 at Flotus. Uh, 10 1604. Not too bad out there as you see traffic in both directions running smoothly all the way through I-10 at La Cantera. Little smudge on the camera there. And uh, I-10 and Ralph Road, Road, not too bad there as the uh, oak is starting to get Mike a little bit. Is it the mold, Mike? That, uh, I don't know. Don't. I, just all of a sudden. Uh -huh. It happens. It happens it occasionally. Does. Well, so. bless you. Times two. God bless you. And that's a beautiful picture behind you. Yeah, that's, is that an egret? I, don't I think so. Okay. Like one. I'll go with that. Okay. It's in the egret family. family? It's, it's a bird right next to the water. Yeah. It's not a flamingo. How about that? 
Thank you both. You're <laughs> welcome. Yeah, we mean to help, but we just don't. <laughs> you want to you join the Captain Obvious trio over here, Leslie? So they their duo, I, I know. should say. No, what a up to them. gorgeous, gorgeous sunrise. And uh, we're going to have another spectacular sunset later on tonight. Temperature, we're still 72. Same thing, Randolph, 73, Canyon Lake, and 60s in the Hill Country. Humidity is... Well, it's getting there, mid-60s, uh, some low 60s in the Hill Country. It will be dropping down, though, later on this afternoon somewhat. Um, not probably quite as much as yesterday, but it'll drop down enough to that will help us get up into the upper 90s later on today. But we may have a bit of a heat index to deal with if there's a bit of this humidity left over tomorrow. The humidity is going to go back up again, as it usually does in the overnight hours. However, it does not appear as though it's going to be dropping down quite as much in the afternoon, maybe to about the mid to upper 60s. And so with the increase in humidity, obviously, heat indices are definitely going to be an issue tomorrow. And that's also going to be helping out with some clouds, too. Temperatures today, we make it to the upper 90s, and we're going to be seeing a lot of uh, low hundreds off in the Rio Grande Valley and then tomorrow we start off about the same close to normal normal being 68 degrees starting off and we'll make it to the uh, mid 90s later on in the afternoon tomorrow. So that will start the decline in temperatures going in toward the rest of the week as well as the weekend. But then, like I said, on the flip side of that, the humidity is definitely going to start to go up and we'll also have a lot more in the way of some clouds. We'll have a few clouds around tomorrow morning, maybe a little bit of mist just because the humidity is going to be kind of coming back into the picture. And then by Thursday, we'll definitely keep uh, some clouds around and maybe a couple of showers around here, even going into Thursday evening and Friday. Now, this is not going to be it's kind of a broad brush, not constant rain, but slightly better chances of rain as we go on in toward the weekend, including Saturday, a few showers around here. But I believe the best chance now looks like it is going to be Sunday and even starting into Monday. So here's what's going on. We're kind of in between two areas of low pressure as of right now, and those will sort of move on out and die down a little bit and temperatures, as I mentioned, will start to go down as we go in toward the weekend. Then going in toward Sunday and Monday, watch as a low starts to develop and sort of sits on top of us. And that's going to be almost stuck in place and it's kind of cut off, meaning it's cut off from the rest of the main flow of the jet stream. So that doesn't move very quickly. And if that indeed does develop, then that would then hang around here and give us a better chance for some rain Sunday, Monday, and maybe in, even into the first half of next week. 90 at noon today sunny skies already above the normal high temperature and then a high today up to 98. The record is 101 out at the airport. And of course, a lot of triple digit readings uh, in the Rio Grande Valley. And of course, that's in the shade. If you are in the sun, it's going to feel a whole lot hotter than that. You know, those treks across the parking lots going into the grocery store are always tough on a day like this. And don't forget about little rovers pause if you're going that's for a true. walk. Decline in temperatures throughout the rest of the week and a chance of rain later on, especially the weekend. Fresh bowl of water, too. Yeah, yeah, lots Thank of shade. You. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. Right now, we're at 648, 72 degrees. Disasters and its aftermath have been linked to trauma and anxiety in children. Tomorrow on GMS 86, we're going to look at some of the protective factors that can help them through the coronavirus pandemic. We sure thank you for starting your day here on KSAT 12 and GMSA. The sun is up. We're rising together on GMSA. We'll be right back. Good Tuesday morning to you. Coming up here on GMA, the latest on that stunning announcement by President Trump, revealing that he's been taking the malaria drug to prevent getting the coronavirus. That is the same drug that the FDA has warned against taking. So Dr. Ashton is with us this morning to break it all down right here on GMA. It appears a motorcycle crash is doubly as painful for one family. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. That crash happened here overnight, right down here on General Hudnell Road beneath the Couples Road Bridge. The San Antonio police say they found both people dead when they arrived. They identified them as a father and son. Police say the father was driving the motorcycle and appeared to be speeding just before he crashed around midnight. They were hesitant to release a whole lot of information because the crash is still under investigation. I did check with the medical examiner's office a little while ago. They say that they are still working to notify the next of kin, so they're not releasing any information such as the name or the age of the people who were killed. 
Reporting from the southwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. We now know the latest plans for reopening the state of Texas. A big part of that plan comes this Friday, May 22nd. Bars can reopen. Good morning, I'm Max Massey. If you do hit the bars, it's going to look a little bit different. So let's take a look at these restrictions. First off, it is going to be 25% maximum capacity. Customers cannot loiter at the bar or in any commonly trafficked areas, and they should remain seated at the tables inside the bar. Now, bars can only provide service to seated individuals, and parties should maintain distance of at least six feet at all times. Activities that enable close human contact, including to but not limited to dancing, are discouraged and any pathways for walking should always be clear. There also has to be designated staff to make sure that customers are socially distancing from each other and a hand sanitizing station should be available when you walk. You also can't have tables of more than six people. And these are just a few of the new restrictions if you expect to hit the bars this Friday. If you're interested in reading more about this, we have all of that information right now. Just head to KSAT.com. Reporting downtown, Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Three people were stabbed after a family violence disturbance on the city's northeast side. San Antonio police say it happened just before 1030 last night at the Salado Creek Apartments in the 3400 block of Salado Creek. Officers say when they arrived, they found three people with stab wounds. Someone in the family, in the family rather, reportedly got upset and cut them. No one was taken to the hospital in serious condition, but one woman was transported in stable condition. Police say the suspect drove off in a tan-colored vehicle. It one of San Antonio's most skilled musicians has been accepted to a top music conservatory in the nation, and he thanks the Youth Orchestra of San Antonio, or YOSA, for that accomplishment. This great grad says he's refined his bass skills, but he admits it hasn't been easy. The full story just ahead on GMSA at 9. Just about five minutes till seven on your Tuesday morning. Time to check the roadways once again. Hi, Marcus. So far, we're looking pretty good out there. Uh, this is 35 at FM 3009. Uh, that bright sunshine indicator, you will need your sunglasses with you, so don't forget those as you're heading out the door. I-10 and Medical, eastbound and westbound lanes. So far, no issues there. We have more than enough room. So right now, there's uh, no changes in anyone's travel times, no delays that we can see. This is the downtown vicinity. 35, 37, where traffic's still moving along fairly well and uh, no problems there. Highway 151 at 410. So all in all, if you're headed out the door, just make sure you have your sunglasses with you and put away those distractions this morning. And the reason you need sunglasses, what a gorgeous, gorgeous picture. Beautiful sunrise this morning, and we have got obviously lots of clear skies out there. Still at 72 degrees, some 60s in the hill country, a few degrees above normal. Humidity is there this morning. It will drop down slightly uh, later on this afternoon, 90 at noon, already above the normal high temperature, and it's going to be a scorcher today. 98 degrees, the record's 101, about 10 above normal. A lot of triple digits in the uh, Rio Grande Valley, and then a decline in temperatures, but at the same time, we're going to see the humidity go up a little bit, more clouds, a couple of showers Thursday, Friday, better rain chances though as the uh, weekend progresses and we'll be back down to the uh, upper to mid 80s by the weekend. Sounds like indoor plans for the latter part of the weekend and the yeah, holiday. Yeah, it's perhaps. looking like it. All right, Mike, thank you so much. Marcus, thank you. Thanks, and thank you so much for being with us this morning, everybody. Hey, make it a great day. We'll see you back here in a couple hours for GMSA at 9.